Hey folks, how you doing? I'm going to break down some pallets I collected to uh, scavenge some lumber out of them. You know how expensive lumber is these days, so I'm just, uh, I caught about, I collected about 15 of them from various places. Usually you can get them for free. People just throw them out. Uh, various, excuse me. Wait for the traffic. Uh, businesses usually just throw them out because there's they're kind of a nuisance, just garbage. So um, you can get quite a bit of lumber out of them if you uh, take a little effort. So here's, um, I picked up about 15 of them the last couple of weeks. And so far, here's the lumber pile. I've got three or four more to go here. Uh, most of the pallets have a, uh, let's see this one here. They have a, uh, heavier piece going across and then some lighter ones going this side. This one's actually pretty good. This has got some uh, actual 2x4s on it, which you don't see very often. There must have been something pretty heavy on that one. But uh, more typically, what you'll see is this is kind of a standard pallet here. You'll have a 2x uh, or a uh, oops, that's the wrong one. A uh, Usually a two by uh, cross pieces on. There's usually three of those going across. You can see back. Let me back up a little bit so you can see better. Um, you can see three pieces going across there, and then they have uh, these other cross slats that are uh, have a smaller dimension going uh, going this way. So um, there is quite a bit of lumber on each pallet, and if you collect quite a few, as as I did here, you can see there's a uh, a lot of them. So let me just show you quick what I've been doing to break these down and a couple of little tricks that you might need to, to do so. What I've been doing is just taking a pry bar and going behind the... Sorry, wait for the traffic here. Just taking a pry bar and going behind the uh, where the, uh, the slat goes into the uh, main part of it and just just prying that out. Usually there's two or three nails in each one of them. And if you just get behind there, you can usually pry it out. So, uh, usually start it with the uh, the long end and then come around and use the uh, the uh, short, the uh, hooked end of it because a little more leverage that way. And what I'm trying to do is ease this out so I don't crack the end too much. They're all pretty much cracked from the uh, driving in the nails in the first place. But um, So I'm trying to ease it off there. If you just yank on it, um, you will put some big cracks down here. And the piece that you have left will be, you'll have to cut the ends off. Uh, the useful piece will not be as uh, long as otherwise. You can see here also, here's one that uh, has already got cracks in it from... Uh, being uh, attached in the first place so what we'll have to do is we'll have to come down here and once we get this off we'll have to cut off that cracked end of it because that won't be uh, very useful so basically that's all I'm doing I'm just working my way um, across there with the pry bar and what I'm doing is I'm removing the top cross piece there and then when I'm done with that I am flipping it over and then doing the other side and then once I've done all that I can start working on taking the middle apart and work in from the ends. So I'm going to just uh, let the camera run and show you how I do this.
option is to take a sawzall with a metal cutting blade in there and go across and cut the nails. The only bad part about that is the uh, in the in the heavier pieces, the nail at the, the bottom of the nail is going to be left in there, and there's really no way to get it out. Here's an example. As I cut this one. I hope you can see that. There's a right in the middle of the screen there. You can see the nail was cut off, and there really is no way to get it out at that point. So what you uh, end up with is the piece is still usable, but you can't rip cut over here because it'll ruin your blades. And also, uh, you can't plane this edge because it'll ruin the, the blade on the planer or your hand plane if you're using that. So that uh, is a disadvantage of that. But if you're just using this for utility type of things, and all you're going to do is drill, is drive more fasteners into it, then it doesn't make any difference. So that is an option. A tip for you is not to leave the boards laying around with the nails sticking out because you're going to step on it. It's not a question of uh, if it's a question of when, so don't do it. I shouldn't have left that standing there. Another tip is to um, put the pry bar straddling the nail when I drive it down in there. Uh, this way when you pry on it, you're less likely to split the end of it. If you just come over on the end and pry like crazy over there, uh, you're liable to split the board. So if you can pry where the nails are, that uh, usually prevents that from splitting. Took the top and bottom uh, main pieces across there off. What I'll do now is to uh, start detaching the slats from the uh, that center piece going across there and I'll work in from one end, one slat at a time, and that way I'll have access to the edge of the slat in order to pry it. That main piece across there had a split in it, and when I tried to pull this off, it just broke, so that's okay. And I wasn't going to save this slat anyway because, as you can see, it had it was basically split all the way up and down before I even touched it. So that's garbage. There's no point trying to save that. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and throw that out. Now, one little tip. There are nails sticking out of it. Hope you can see that and I don't want to uh, step on those and I don't when I throw this in the trash I don't want the uh, garbage man to uh, get that hooked on himself so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna I don't have to pull them but I'll just bend them over so they're flat against the back there and this way This way I won't put one through my foot and when the trash man takes this he won't uh, um, rip his arm open. stay in the slats and some of them will stay in the, uh, the heavier pieces so you just take your hammer and just ease them out. Now uh, sometimes these nails are a bit stubborn because they are usually either spiral shanked like this one is or ring shanked so they uh, so that they don't just fall out when they're using the pallets so sometimes they need a little muscle to get them out but they will come out if you uh, put enough leverage on them. What we're going to do is get a better view here. All we're going to do is drive those through and then flip it over and pull them out. They're out. I'm going to just keep doing that for all these boards now. Uh, 
reminder here if you are doing this in your driveway make sure you pick all the nails up because otherwise uh, you may end up with a flat tire uh, situations where the nail is bent over so you can just take the take my foot involved there just take the hammer and straighten that up so you can drive it back through you may run into another situation um, Notice that there are some nail heads showing here. They're not on the back here. What somebody guessing that this piece was reused from one pallet to another, they just cut the nails off. Same way I uh, mentioned earlier about using the sawzall. So uh, what we have in here is we have the stubs of the nails stuck into the wood, and we got to get them out of there if we're going to do anything as far as planing this or. Uh, anything like that so what you do is you take a nail set and drive them through from the back until the head's sticking up enough on the other side uh, to pull it out so let me show you that now you can see the nails are sticking up enough on this side so I can pull them so that takes care of that All right have one other situation some of these are put together with staples Let's see if you can get that focused here and you'll have them sticking out like that by the way be careful of those because they really rip you open if you get caught on them what you want to do is get a pair of pliers um, this happens to be a an end cutting plier which I like to use to pull nails with just grip it and then pry against the wood itself and the staple will the slats are being held on with staples too, so uh, there is a little trick to uh, getting them out. I'm going to show you right now. Now here's one that was stapled on there. What I found was that driving these back through was difficult. They're very thin and they tend to bend over when you try to drive them. So what I've been doing is I've been cutting them off. about half inch or so from the, uh, the surface of the wood and that makes them a lot easier to, uh, to drive back through there and then I can grab them out with the pliers on the other end and pull them the rest of the way out. Uh, I've also found that when the staples are in there it's, it's much harder to get the slat off of there without splitting the ends of it so you will have some loss. What I'll do uh, is just what you can do is just cut the broken piece off of there and you'll still have quite a decent sized piece to uh, to use as to what to save and what not to that's a, a judgment call and it depends on what kind of project you're doing if you look, you look at this piece it uh, there's a there's a wane on the edge of it. it doesn't look particularly promising but you can rip that wane off and you'll still have a decent sized piece to work with now most of these slats are usually between half inch and five eighths they're not a full three quarter inch that doesn't matter the uh, if you're using these for small projects uh, you know boxes and uh, little doodads and so, and so much wow today's a bad day i cannot speak um if you use <laughs> wow if you're using these for small projects little boxes and doodads and that sort of thing uh, the thickness isn't going to make any difference because you would probably have wanted a, a thinner piece anyway. If you get lucky, um, let's see if i got an example here. Sometimes you get lucky and you get a thicker piece. Here's a, here's a piece that's a full three-quarter inch. Kind of just depends on what the pallet was designed for. The light-duty ones are all thin, but um, if they had something heavier on there, a piece of machinery or something, you might find some that have the three-quarter inch so that's uh, nice to have and uh, you have to decide what uh, what you can save and what you can't now in this example this uh, heavier piece the end of it broke off but that's okay because I can cut it right there and uh, so even though it uh, kind of busted it doesn't matter um, I still have a pretty, a pretty decent length of it to use so I'll, that's what I'll do with that one Sometimes you get ones that are really 
kind of useless. Um, this is part of a uh, palette that I busted up yesterday. and I took other things off of that I saved, but this is part of so busted up. This, everything is cracked. Everything is uh, um, broken, and uh, it didn't want to come apart either. So it was really being stubborn. So sometimes you just have to throw it out, and since it's free, it doesn't matter. Just toss it. There's no point putting the labor into trying to uh, salvage that thing when there's not really much useful lumber in it. So that's what I do with pallets. You can see there's a, as I showed you earlier, there's a pretty good pile there and I'm not quite finished. I got a couple more to break down. So uh, that yielded really well. Now, can you make fine furniture out of it? You probably can if you uh, happen to get lucky with the right lengths of pieces and it's not a, a um, not a real large uh, piece of furniture. You could probably, you know, an end table or something like that. There's definitely an, plenty of lumber that you could use to uh, do that. The only real disadvantage of doing it this way is that there's nail holes all over the place, but uh, that can be overcome. My primary use for this lumber right now is to make benchwork for my model railroad. So uh, it's underneath. Nobody's going to see it. And this lumber is perfectly adequate for that, and it saved me well at current lumber prices it saved me probably several hundred dollars for you know four or five hours worth of work to bust them up so uh, that works out good for me but uh, you know there's a lot of people that do use this to make really nice projects on it. if you go online you'll uh, go onto YouTube you'll you know look up uh, uh, pallet projects and uh, you'll find they, some people did some really nice stuff with it so there's some good lumber in there if your budget is real tight, and basically whose isn't at this point, uh, this is a good way to save money and still be able to continue your woodworking hobby. Also, a lot of this stuff can be used in the uh, for utility purposes. If you need shelves in your shop, uh, you need to make little boxes for hardware or to hold tools or what have you. Um, this is a good source for the lumber for that. So, there's a... Uh, turn around so you can see me a little bit. Not... You may see other ways to do it if you look on YouTube. There's videos on how to take these apart. This is what works for me, so hopefully it'll work for you. So thanks for watching. See you next time.